Hello guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. Happy New Year. This is the first video for me for 23. Today I want to do this uh, video on creating a custom landscape in Stellarium. For those who don't know, Stellarium is a planetary software, planetarium software, and it's also a great planning tool for astrophotographers to use. It allows them to see where different celestial objects are seasonally and also during the night when they're doing uh, their acquisitioning. Uh, having a custom landscape is, is a great idea because your own environment and the obstructions within that environment appear on the screen. So for example, a neighbor's house, a garage, your own house, trees, whatever, telegraph poles, whatever may obstruct your view. And this way it, it better gives you an idea of when and where those celestial targets rise and best time to uh, to shoot them before they get obstructed. There are other videos out there on um, creating custom landscapes. Mine is a little different. Um, I hope you get something out of this today. I will try to keep it short. It's going to be a long video, probably the longest one I've made. Um, I will cut things and uh, speed things up to try and make it a little bit more bearable for you. Um, I hope someone gets something out of this today, and uh, anyway, cheers, happy new year. So here I have a, um, my smartphone and my panoramic mode is, in, is vertical, so uh, portrait mode, that's how it works. What I'm doing is spinning around, it gets to about 270 degrees, so further than 180 degrees. So I go around in one direction until I get to the point where my phone tells me I've got enough and then once I've done that I'll uh, then take it back to what I've done is I started from the east and went through to the west and now I'm going back to where my west is and I'm going to do the same thing I take another panoramic and Again, it's going to be more than 180 degrees, swinging the other way, so I end up with a much larger uh, landscape than the 360 degrees, and you'll see later in the video how we will, um, we will turn that image into a 360 degree image. So let's go inside and process this. Okay peeps, um, I am going to try and make this tutorial a little less painful by um, skipping through parts, fast forwarding through stuff so that you guys don't have to uh, painstakingly do with every bit of the process. Um, this first step will be kind of importing images and creating a new file in Photoshop so basically we'll I have my um, two files up here in this folder uh, they're the two panoramics that I created earlier I'll open Photoshop and I'll open those two files okay so the image size of these is quite large, 10,000 plus pixels, and that is because it's a panoramic, so it's quite wide. What I want to do in order for um, your landscape to, uh, to work in Stellarium needs to be in a 16.9 format. And because it's such a big image, um, I need to have a, a fairly high resolution. I have seen other videos with a lot lower resolution than that. Um, as low as 2048 by 1024 but um, they could look quite pixelated so I'm deciding to go with 8192 by 4096 
um, and it's still a 16-9 ratio. So I'm going to create a new file and I need about 20,000 pixel width to get both images stitched and my height, it's got to be greater than 4,096 so I've created uh, 5,000 there. Um, 72 pixels RGB, make sure this is transparent. Okay, so now um, with my two images, I want to um, actually stitch the two together and I want to find a point that's going to stitch well and doesn't look too obvious. So I think I'm going to use the back of that shed right there. So for my first image, I've got a crop. I might just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to use my crop tool to crop it to that back edge and I'll crop that there. Now I'll do the same with this image over here so I'll select that image and this time from the other side bit crop that there okay and I'll select that so now we have both images cropped hopefully to a good point where they can be stitched together so from here I want to um, put these images into this file that I've created so we'll Control A to select that. Oops, I'll get rid of deselect. Control A to select that. Control C to copy that. Control A to select and Control C. So I'll paste that image in. I'll do the same with this one. Control A to select. Control C to copy. And here, Control A to select. Control C to paste. Now, I have both my images in there so if I if I use my move, move tool here I can I can move these about um, hopefully where I created that uh, stitch point as you can see it's pretty good so what I'll do now is before I uh, flatten or resize this image at all, I'm going to just select I think this one and match the brightness of this one over here. Uh, brightness. Now this doesn't have to be perfect in any way because you're not actually using the background. Um, because Delirium has its own background, has its own night and day background, so you're not going to really see it anyway. So just rough enough there is good enough. Um, just maybe adjust a little bit more. Close enough for me. Okay, so now um, I'm Happy with that, I can, I will flatten that now. So we flatten that image and now it's time to uh, crop again. So what we want to do this time is crop to the back of that shed because the panoramic is wider than 360 degrees. So each panoramic is, the, the two that I took is wider than 180. They're more like about 270. Um, I have to bring them back to so that they, the whole image is 360 degrees. So I'm going to use the back of that shed that I talked about before over here. And I'll have to zoom quite in for this. Now I'll select my crop tool. I'm going to drag it Oops. 
this to the back of that shed, which is close enough for me. And I'll have to do the same on this side. So again, I'll grab the crop tool, drag it to the back of this shed. Okay. Happy with that, I will crop that. So now that should be a complete 360 degrees. Now, um, now I'm happy with that, I've got that done. I will resize this image because I want this image to be 8,192 pixels across. So I'm just resizing the width for now. So I'll link those together so it doesn't change my aspect ratio. 8192. Okay, um, and we're good there. As you can see now, I have my correct width I require for my 16.9 ratio. And we'll move on. Okay, next I want to do a custom crop on this. Um, what I want to do is I will crop the image here to width and height. Now because I've already done it before, it's already got my width and height in here. So as you can see, uh, you need to if it put your own custom height here, so width is 8,190 8, pixels in my case, and 4,096 pixels. So that's what I want the crop to be. Um, so I'm happy with that. So we can crop that now. Just to check, which size, 8192 by 4096. So it's exactly what we want. Um, the next step here, because we want to be able to move this image slightly um, to where the center of your lens on your telescope is. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to create a grid. So to do that, to create some crosshairs, you go down to preferences and into grids and slices. Now in this grid section, if you change that to a percentage, and then type 50 percentage, which is basically halving it, and then one subdivision. So essentially we'll put a, a set of crosshairs in your image uh, when you select that option. So I'll get out of that now. Um, now I will view these crosshairs by view, show, grid. As you can see now, I've got some crosshairs in my image. So what I can do now, is with the move tool I can move the image around using the crosshairs as a reference so what I want to do is and what you need to do is find the exact height of your where the center of your telescope lens is on your tripod and then directly horizontal you'll need to find uh, a target in your image that corresponds to that. So in my case, when my telescope is completely horizontal, I know that the height of it, if I move the screen, comes roughly about there. So that's pretty close to where the center of the lens is. Uh, and I know that because I've uh, I've eyed it off and you'll probably have to do the same for a particular bit of landscape in your backyard. Okay, so now I'm happy with the position of that. Um, what I will do now is uh, flatten that image. So 
and now we should have our image size as being correct, correct width and correct height for what I want for the project. And now I know that I've got the very center of this image lined up where the center of my telescope is going to be. So hopefully it will give, make it fairly accurate above these trees. And okay, so we'll move on here. Let's, um, we don't need those grid lines now. So it's time to get rid of all this white under here because we don't want that in Stellarium. We want it nice and black when you look down. So make sure that's selected to black, which it is. With your rectangle tool now, zoom in for this. We want to select all that area. Mouse is stuck. Right, so now all that area down there is black, so it won't show up in Stellarium in the landscape. And now we want to get rid of the sky. So I'm use my little magic wand here. Oop, I'm sorry, we just got better flatten this image now. Flatten that image. Yep. Now we also have to unlock this in order to expose the background. Our magic wand tool here, we can select that, we can delete that. Now we've also with the magic wand tool. This is, um, you can take as long as you want with this, the longer the better. I'm just gonna roughly just get rid of the background with the magic wand tool for now. So if you clicked on, click on an area of the sky, for example, if you hold down the shift key now, you can keep selecting areas around there. Zoom in a bit. And I wanna try and get as much selected as possible. Don't go too overboard in these areas here just yet. I would do this um, in a few stages. And I've just... Um, with that as a starting point so just hit the delete button now and that magically disappears okay so I would just do go over the magic wand now again and of course this sections up to you how you really do it but uh, I'm showing you what I do you can Now just go back in and select little areas that weren't picked up before. And you might want to get some of the larger areas out of the tree. Don't try to get all the detail of the tree, it'll end up taking away a lot of your branches and things. And we will uh, get rid of this later in our color selection tool. And I'll Show you that but we will just zip through this for now Okay, so um, it's a magic wand tool. You, the reason I'm not trying to get right in and go through all the branches is for one, it'll take forever. 
and also the Magic Wand tool can be a little bit rough in its selection and can, uh, I want to be able to see as many of those branches and the idea for me is to be able to, um, for example, um, see the moon rising and, and other celestial objects coming through these trees, stars and stuff like that. So that's why we, if, if you don't get rid of, if you don't try to make that as transparent in between as you can, you're not going to get a lot of that. So the next step here um, for, after the Magic Wand tool for me is I'm going to go into color selection and I'm going to try using my color selection tool to get into the nitty gritties of these areas. Okay, time for um, selective color. So now I want to get the color out basically between these trees. So what I like to do um, is just work on a part of the image at a time. I'll usually lasso around an area because I don't want the color selection to bleed anywhere where I don't want it to be. So I only want it in the selected area. So sol uh, select color range and click on that. Now you can adjust the fuzziness here, but um, you don't want to overdo it, you end up with just getting rid of everything, getting rid of all the branches and it just looks weird. So experiment ar around with it a little bit. Uh, hit the delete key once you've selected those. Then um, just deselect it and have a bit of a look. Um, as you can see it hasn't got all the blue out of it. So what I'll do again is I'll do the same thing. I saw it. And this time I'll select that lighter color that it didn't get out. Okay. Delete. And as you can see, that's done a pretty good job. Only has to be rough. Um, you can be as detailed as you want. So I'm going to keep working on this image now and um, you don't need to see all of that. I'll speed through it and we'll have a look at the end result. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that um, and I think now it's time to uh, to move on to the next step. Okay, new day, new shirt. Uh, we want to save this image now. We actually uh, want to export this image and we want to export this image as a PNG file. Make sure transparency is uh, ticked. Uh, double check, yes, we've got the correct resolution we need for our 16.9 format. And export to a folder um, of your choice. Now, you need to change this for file name to landscape. And uh, I'll show you why a little bit later. Save that. Just double check. That I have saved that correctly. So there it is there. And there's our image. Okay, next step. We need to put that PNG landscape file that we created inside of Stellarium's program file. So you want to go into your C drive. You want to find program files 
um, and then there should be a folder called Stellarium there and then there's another folder called Landscapes and there's another folder called Custom so they're all the other landscapes that are built into Stellarium so there's an any file in there as well so I'm just going to first copy my landscape and paste it in here so the reason we named that file landscape is because the any file the map index actually points to that file name so if it's not called landscape it won't find it and uh, it's also a PNG um, file type that it uh, uses. Here you're going to have to put your own longitude and uh, your longitude and latitude adjustments in that are relevant to you and your position and your altitude, etc. This uh, angle rotation, for me, I know where my south reference point is um, from taking a little video of it, and I, I've got a uh, I can line that up. Um, I literally put my observatory pointing completely south um, and I've filmed that so that I know I can match up the south point in Stellarium with that point uh, where I know south is on my observatory which I already have marked. So you'll change that number to either go left or right. Um, it'll be different for yours. I'm going to leave uh, a copy of that in my description so you can simply copy that and paste that and then you can put your own longitude, latitude, altitude and you'll have to adjust your own rotation to suit. Okay here comes the fun part. I will open up Stellarium and we'll have a look. Okay so my south point you can see that it's all uh, it's got compass points directions and I know from lining up my observatories south point that it's pretty much where that branch is um, so one degree kind of represents you know one of 360 degrees so um, I'm just going to take a stab. I've already done this so I know what the numbers are so I will change it to the correct number and you'll see that um, a small amount of degrees will move that to the right point. So I'll minimize that. Actually I have to close that because once you make a change you have to redo it. So we go back into our any file and I know it's 214 for me in my case so I'm going to put 214 and save that. I'll open up Stellarium again and hopefully this time you will find that um, it has moved pretty close to where I want it and as you can see my south is lined up exactly where my celestial south is okay um, let's have a bit of a look and as you can see you can clearly see through these branches and I had an original landscape I did years ago and it was pretty rough and um, that day in particular was a lot of cloud as well. If you can take it on a really clear day, um, in which this case I was lucky enough to do it, it's probably the best time to do it because then you don't have white clouds and stuff uh, entangled amongst your blue sky and it just makes it a lot easier to, uh, especially for selective colouring, you, you only have one general colour to worry about. But I think that's pretty good and as you can, see, you can see right through, so we should be able to see celestial objects coming through these trees. So we'll just, um, I'll fast forward this a little bit and see how we go. And we should start to see things change as sun drops now into sunset. And that's looking pretty 
good. And you can see now celestial objects coming up. And because my east is over here, I often, uh, I couldn't tell before where the moon was rising until it was literally over the top of the tree. So now I'm hoping, as you can see there, the moon coming up through the trees, I get a good idea of when the moon's coming up and what time. I suppose to try and to see it there first for the first time and then try to calculate how long that is. So um, I hope you guys got something out of this video today. Um, I am happy with this overall. Thanks for watching and please if you do like the video please subscribe it really helps me out thank you